Hi everyone! In this video I am excited to bring you some new makeup from Burt's Bees. We don't often see makeup coming out from Burt's Bees or it's not really talked about on YouTube, so we're going to look at their new Color Nurture line within which they have both cream eyeshadows and cream blushes. So I'm going to swatch all of the colors for you in those two categories and I will also take a couple of the shades and apply them to my face. Um, I'll probably wear them throughout the day and just check in with you, give you my final thoughts at the end of the day and after I swatch them. So if you want to see what the colors look like, how they swatch and apply, and what my review of them is, then keep watching. Thank you so much for being a subscriber and following over on Instagram. This month we're going to have one or two giveaways over on Instagram, so stay tuned there if you want to win some really cool makeup. And of course, if you missed the last video, that was some fantastic, especially skincare, more skincare and hair care focus this month but also some really cool makeup that's new this past month. That's the What's New in Beauty video, which I will link in the upper right-hand corner for you to check out. So first, where can you find these to purchase them? I will always link in the description box below the most affordable price that you can find the products that I review for you and swatch for you on this channel. You can find them and they're the same price through both Walmart and Amazon. So the blushes retail at both those locations for $9.43. The eyeshadows actually are the exact same price also. You also can find these, I think, through Target and, of course, through Burt's Bees' own website, but they're a little more expensive on those sites. Let's start with the Color Nurture Cream eyeshadows. There are three total shades. Burt's Bees says that they are 99.7% natural origin, whatever that means. Light up your lids with a nourishing creamy eyeshadow that applies effortlessly with your fingertips. These are supposed to be buildable colors that multitask as highlighters. So I guess I'll try to remember to use them as highlighters too when I demonstrate. They're supposed to have nourishing ingredients and all of them are shimmery nude shades. I will note that all of these products, the eyeshadows and blushes, do have a scent to them. And when I look at the ingredients, unfortunately, I do see that fragrance has been added which I think is particularly concerning for the eyeshadows that are near your eyes. And uh, the eyeshadows also have citronellol, which is also a fragrant ingredient. It doesn't matter if it is natural fragrance or not. Fragrance uh, can be very irritating to the skin, cause an allergic reaction, and you definitely don't want it near extra sensitive places like the eyes, but you don't want it really on the skin regardless. So all the products in this line, including the blushes, have the same packaging and are the same size. So they come in plastic jars like this with plastic lids that twist off. For the price, you will get 0.25 ounces or 7.08 grams of product, same with the blushes. You can see that the products have that Leaping Bunny logo on them and I'll put my nail polish color in the description box below. So this shade is 1535 Caramel Buttercream. I'm gonna do the swatch with my fingers. Very soft and creamy to the touch. This is a pretty pale sheer champagne color. Not leave much color behind at all. Let's build it up as much as we can. These have a pretty thin texture, um, almost watery in feel. It's not like your traditional MAC paint pot cream texture. Yeah, it's just disappearing almost into nothingness. It would be a beautiful highlight on the skin because of the sheer nature, but if you wanted color on the lids, I don't know that this would give it to you. One more layer here. I mean, it's very pretty, but it's very sheer. The shade is 1540 Rose Cream. Oh, much better color on this, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely a rose toned, shimmery, bronzy shade. It's like a really soft rose gold, maybe. Oh, yeah, it's, it is also shearing out a lot. Do another layer on that. That shows up better than the first one. And 1545 Honey Caramel. 
the deepest of the shades. Very pretty, definitely shows up. Less sheer. It's like a soft goldeny brown. One more layer. Okay, so there are your three eyeshadow slash maybe highlight shades when swatched. I kind of just think they maybe should have marketed these as highlighters. You can build them up, especially the last two shades, but we'll see how they go on the lids. All right, next up are the Color Nurture Cream Blushes. These are supposed to have a lightweight, luxuriously creamy formula. Again, three shades, 99.7% natural origin. Get a natural flush of color that nourishes and moisturizes your skin with this luxurious, ultra blendable, creamy blush. And like with the eyeshadows, there has been fragrance added and citronella. Here's the shade 1270 Guava Meringue. This is a medium yellow based pink color, light to medium. I'm gonna apply again, but then blend it out. Get these feel nice and smooth. A little less, I don't know, damp feeling than the eyeshadows. 1275 Strawberry Cream. A medium kind of rosy pink color. See, these have pretty good color to them. You have a little more product. Blending that out. Pretty shade here. And twelve eighty berry whip. This is a medium to slightly deeper berry shade. Definitely more integrity to the pigmentation in these blushes compared to the eyeshadows slash highlighters. All right, there are your three cream blush shades. I don't see any shimmer in any of these shades. Okay, I don't have any makeup on. I just have my skincare and my sunscreen. The sunscreen that I'm testing out leaves a little bit of a white cast, so I might look a little pale. I also still have peeling on my nose. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, let's go with the medium uh, berry shade or uh, blush shade in the range that was strawberry cream. I'm gonna use my fingers, at least at first. Or on one side, I might switch to a brush on the other just to see the difference in application. Um, the feeling of the blush is very smooth, uh, very creamy, but I don't know, there's a little bit of patchiness in the shade. I feel in general like it's it's a lot harder to formulate a really good smoothly blending cream or gel blush and particularly for drugstore brands I feel like they have a hard time formulating them. Not the smoothest on the skin. That's how much pigment I'm getting out of it compared to here. For the cheek I'm going to use, um, usually I use a like a duo fiber brush like this but I just have a feeling that's not gonna work very well, so I want something a little more dense. I have no idea what this brush is. It's some generic brand br brush that I got years and years ago. I think this 
is probably a slightly better method of application. And still maybe not the smoothest, but I feel like definitely more uniform than the finger, applica applica finger application side. And uh, I think a little more, you get a little more color out of this method. I'm gonna go back to the first side and go over, try to smooth it out and I want to build up the color. I just think my a duo fiber brush would be a little too flimsy, at least the ones that I own. Yeah, I like that a lot better. All right, so there's the cheeks done. Definitely for the eyes, I'm gonna you're gonna want to apply an eye primer at the base. Um, I'm, I think I'm, well, I might even dust some translucent powder on top because these are so slippery and creamy in formula that I do not expect them to, um, on their own, resist creasing at all. I don't even know if a, an eyeshadow primer is going to be able to save them from the creasing. Okay, let's see how well the lightest shade applies on the actual lid since it was so sheer in the swatches. Caramel, buttercream. Yeah, it just shears out into nothing. We can try building it up. Again, it looks very pretty if you want a like almost colorless shimmer on the lids. Beautiful, but very, very subtle. So instead we're gonna use the same shade. I'm gonna use it as my highlight. And I am using a small duo fiber brush because I want a diffused layer of shimmer. Yeah, that is a very pretty highlight shade. I'm going to go in with my fingers. So hopefully you can see that up close a little bit. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of blush over the highlight because it, I, don't, I want to diffuse the border. I don't want a streak of highlight. For the eyes, I'm going to go in with the middle shade, Rose cream. Even this one, again, beautiful, just very sheer in pigmentation. See the difference between that and the first shade that's applied? put just a teeny bit of the deepest shade Honey Caramel just at that outer corner. Okay, so there's the almost completed makeup look. I still need to bronze up the skin. You can tell my skin's kind of pale. I used the 100% Pure Bamboo Blur Powder, which I mentioned in my What's New in Beauty video from March 2021. I really like this. I think it's a fantastic talc-free powder. Um, if you looked up close, you'd see my little flaky patches, but it's a very mattifying, uh, it's not, not due to the formula of this powder, it's just my skin. Um, very mattifying, lovely formula on this one. Okay, so I will be putting on and off a mask throughout the day, so we'll see how this cream blush holds up under the powder, and we will see how badly or not the cream eyeshadow creases. I'll check in with you at the end of the day. All right, here's what my face looks like at the end of the day. I am pleasantly surprised. These held up so much better than I thought they would, in particular, the eyeshadows. I do not see any creasing. I am on the border of shocked because the texture of them, they just feel like they're gonna crease instantly. Now remember, I did apply eyeshadow primer underneath, so I'm sure that that helps. I can't speak to what it would be like if you just put them purely on the skin directly without a primer underneath, but hopefully you can see, I don't really see any creasing. The color on the cheeks also held up pretty well and held up decently well under a mask. A little bit of fading where the sides of the mask hit the cheeks, but that's to be expected. That's what you get at the end of the day. 
All right, so overall, better than expected performance. Um, I think that they still could have some more color, especially to that first shade, but otherwise they seem to perform quite decently throughout the day with resist increasing. I do also wish the cream blushes were a little bit easier, smoother in application, but again, um, my end of the day actual review after testing them is uh, better than I expected after kind of swatching and after just applying them. So my biggest criticism I think is the fragrance that they've added, not only fragrance to both of these products, but in addition to that, the additional fragrant ingredient citronellol, uh, completely unnecessary to the formula and absolutely can be irritating to the skin. So uh, based on those things, I, this would not be at my top of the list to ever buy or repurchase, but, you know, people who really do care about quote unquote natural ingredients have a much smaller universe of products to choose from. So if your personal preference is to only purchase makeup that is in the quote unquote natural category, then I guess these are going to be a, a decent option for you. All right, I hope that this video was helpful to you and you enjoyed. If you've tried these or used these, let me know what you think and any other thoughts you have in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.